That's what happens is there's a template of people coming in and saying, hey, my dog is reactive, my dog is fearful, my dog is um, overly excited, my dog pulls on the leash, my dog is whatever, right? And all of those dogs usually have lack of control on the leash. We have to, we have to work on control regardless. So the control- What's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. You guys, this is a great episode. This individual came in with leash reactivity, but we discover so much more. What to say to your dog, what not to say to your dog, how to hold the leash, how not to hold the leash. Um, she literally was working on leash reactivity and we discovered and uncovered and peeled off so many different layers of how to be a better dog owner. And what I'm going to do guys is I'm actually going to pull multiple segments from this episode. So this this was filmed and I'm gonna pull multiple different segments. I'm gonna upload them over the course of the next week or so um, because there's just that much information. She had had dogs before with no problem. She's had dogs her whole life and then all of a sudden she's dealing with the dog with some behavioral problems. So a lot of information in the entire episode. I'm just gonna pull some stuff out for you guys. But I hope you guys like this video. It is brick here in upstate New York, but Thompson's, my St. Bernard's loving it. I'll show you guys him here in a second but uh i hope you guys like this video i know i certainly did absolutely beauty of a dog beauty of a dog owner if you guys haven't yet do me a solid favor and come play uh to fetch with my dog <laughs> just kidding uh like this video of course guys smash that subscribe button i appreciate you guys i put videos out like like this every single week wait let's see thompson really quick I know I have a problem because I can't, I want to go on a hike with him. I want to, people are up and down with their dogs and I don't, I can't do it because I'm afraid, I'm afraid to do it with him. Yeah. I used to have to walk him with this wrapped around my waist. Yeah. I'm looking to have a, a, a better balanced dog. Okay. And, and for me to, how to bestow that on him. Well, we have to, we have to work on control regardless. So the control is, it doesn't matter if your dog is reactive or nice or playful or submissive or aggressive, control and obedience is what controls all of that. So you have, you have a lot of different tiers of things going on with dogs and if you have that control to say, hey, this is what I want you to do and how I want you to do it, please pay attention to me and, and listen, then nothing else really matters. You say heal, he heals. You say down, he downs. You say sit, he sits. You say place, etc. leave it, whatever. If you have those pre-existing behaviors, you have a really good opportunity and a fair chance to be successful when you're out. What he feels like he wants to do is, it is entirely a different page of what we're talking about. It matters, but in everyday dog ownership, if you walk past a dog and he's like, hey, I'm kind of iffy about that dog, I don't care. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Like, we're not going to sit here and talk about it and you know, kumbaya around it, we're just gonna keep moving. So that's what happens is that there's a template of people coming in and saying, hey, my dog is reactive, my dog is fearful, my dog is um, overly excited, my dog pulls on the leash, my dog is whatever, right? And all of those dogs usually have lack of control on the leash. From my part, from my- From a handler side, yep. It's not just you, it's a, it's, it's a lot of people. Okay. So it's the externals of like, hey, I don't like this, whatever that is. Again, it doesn't matter if it's aggression or my dog's too playful or happy. But the point is, is if you don't have the control, that's where it all usually stems from. So that's what I want to focus on. So that way, when you go out, it doesn't matter how he feels about the other dogs at that time, because A, he's never going to be friends with those dogs because you'll never see him again. And B, you have a 50-50 chance if you have a dog that, even if you have a dog that's super friendly, you still have a 50-50 chance that the other dog you don't know about. So you're taking a shot, you're flipping a coin. Mm -hmm. So you gotta remember that, that when you're out and you wanna do, those, those goals that you said are very common for most people. I wanna bring my dog and do active things, hiking, walking down the road, walking down the street, whatever. But again, it, you need to control what you can control. Mm -hmm. Everything else is predicated off of other people's behaviors, which is really hard to judge and, and have a, 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 a consistent variable mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, okay, this dog's not gonna do anything. I'm gonna walk right by, we're gonna be all good. On the contrary, that dog freaks out. And now you're all over the place. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It does make sense. Yeah. So let's start off with the with the Herm Springer, because um, I know that you're interested in it. If you've been pulled down by your dog, yeah. I go right to the prong, okay. because it's your health, it's his life that depends on it. Because all of a sudden you're walking, and then he goes boop, you fall down, you break your arm, you smash your face. He's running off, he gets hit by a car, gets in a dog fight, whatever. 
whatever the case may be. I don't mess around with that. I care about dogs too much to let that happen. So we go for the ultimate control immediately in those cases. He's a big, powerful dog, and I want you to be able to enjoy him. Exactly what I want. Okay, so here's a Herm Springer 3.0. <coughs> so I'm going to show you how to put this on really quick. So you don't. So let me take the leash. So um, future, ready? Future reference. So whenever somebody is going to handle your dog, and whenever anybody's going to come up and hang out with your dog, don't. I wouldn't put him into a sit okay. because it puts him into a, a vulnerable spot okay. where it's like you know you got an animal right, and he's not like jumping in my arms with excitement, right? right? He doesn't love me, he doesn't, he's not that type of dog. We don't have to work. But, so when, when, you're, when you're coming over, you're like, hey, sit there and don't move as this person you don't know comes up and messes with you. Okay. It puts him in a really bad spot. Okay. So whenever you're gonna do situations like that where if somebody's gonna, same thing with the veterinarian, like we have a lot of clients that are veterinarians and we work with them frequently and they're loving this COVID thing because the owners don't have to handle their dog. It makes it so much easier for them because the owners put all this. So anyway, again, you talked about, hey, I want to create a better relationship. Yeah. There's a tip number one. Anytime you're going to say, hey, yeah, sure, go ahead. Just just do that okay. and just let them go. Because as soon as you go, hey, sit there, don't move as this person touches you, you don't know. It creates a lot of tension between us. And then it creates a lot of tension just, you know, with the prong essentially with association. So break, bye buddy. Yes, good boy. So what I do is I always pull away from the from the owners, um, and he's just a little nervous. You see his his tongue licking there. His yeah. he's looking at me. He's looking at you. He's like, okay, I'm out. So I'm gonna have you put this on. I don't wanna um I don't wanna hear you can take the leash. All right, you guys, it's giveaway time. As always, I'm gonna be giving away a free no bad dogs training leash. It is a four foot uh, training leash. If you guys wanna purchase one, the link is in the description. As always, but all you guys have to do is leave your dog's name letter by letter by letter in the comments below and I will randomly select one person in the next 24 hours. Go ahead, enter to win, let's go. Um, really quick, okay? So it, I always tell people if you're sweating, you're doing it wrong, okay? okay? Really simple. So you put one end in here, uh -huh. okay? And then you just pinch the other side, okay? okay? Yep. Slides in, same thing on the way out, you just pinch and it slides out. Okay. Pinch collar, that's why it's a pinch collar, okay? Prong collar, pinch collar. Um, so there you go, go ahead and put that on. The top, there's gonna to be two different, let me show you. Always, our, our professional dog training setup is gonna be with our four foot uh, no bad dog leash and then the safety clip and the prong collar. Mm -hmm. So when you clip your collar, there's gonna, they're gonna have two different rings here. Ah. So this ring is a half, half, I call it a half ring, half D ring. That's where you hook your leash to, okay? So the other one is a D ring and I primarily use it if, so the correction of a prong, I talk about this a lot, but if yeah. you don't know, the correction of a prong comes from here. Right. So even if a dog pulls, this doesn't matter. This does not correct them. I've, I've done that in many, many tutorials on that. Yep. The actual correction comes from this. So, right, so you can take your leash and when you put it on the prong here, right? So this is your correction. And then when you actually take your leash and you put it here, there's no correction. So if you're on a hike and you're using your prong for really power steering control and whatever, you're gonna go from, from you know, here to here. And then if you're like, okay, um, I, I still want your prong on, but I don't really need to correct. Or if he's working on recall and you don't want him to catch himself, yep. you just put it on your D-ring here and then it doesn't correct and that's it. Okay. So good question. You wanna make sure that your prong has that nice triangle. Okay, and you can actually put my, my uh, training leash on. Good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is introduction of not only me, but leash pressure in general. So I wanna show you something. So see how he's pulling on that prong? Yeah. So remember how I was ta telling you is like a lot of people think that the dog pulls against the prong and the prong just magically works? No, it's like buying a screwdriver and say, okay, build the house. Absolutely not. You have to know how to use it in order for it to work. And it goes on both ends of the spectrum. You, you can, you can, you'll either just sit here and go, this thing sucks, or you use it wrong and it completely blows your training to the other world. So I'm just gonna start working with him. Finn, come, good boy. So he's gonna keep pinging off at the end of the leash. I'm gonna start saying his name and then come, Finn, come, okay? He's gonna, he's gonna fight me probably five to six times. And my goal is, is to when I say, hey, please do this, and then he turns around and just does it and I don't even have to touch him. 
but the point of the operant conditioning and applying positive punishment and applying some sort of pressure to say, hey, you got to, hey man, you got to pay attention to me because I got to teach you, I got to get you out of this. I want you to get better. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Finn, come. Good boy. Good come. Finn, come. Come. Good boy. Good job. Good. Finn, come. Good boy. Good come. Finn, come. Good come. So there's three. Finn, come. Yes, good come. Yes, buddy. Finn, sit. Good sit. Good. So you're seeing this, this like reluctancy, of course, because he's sit. He's a little nervous and he's not used to probably working with other people and he's not used to the equipment. So he's like, what are we doing? Totally okay for him to be nervous. Totally normal for him to be stressed. Stress is part of building character. Stress is part of getting to the other side of progression. Stress is normal and part of our life. It's crazy for anybody to, to say, I'm completely stress-free dog training. That means you're probably not progressing. And I say that with a grain of salt because I know that there's a lot of different things you can do to get a dog super motivated to do certain things. But when you're typically modifying behavior, you're modifying something that they feel comfortable in doing and they have done every single day of their life. So changing that is going to be stressful. I just bought a house, awesome, stressful as hell. And it still is, and it has been for months, but it's, a, it's progression, right? You know what I mean? So, so you're the magnet right now. Finn, come. Good, come. Good. Finn, come. Yes, buddy, good, come. So I just wanna go over what we're doing here is he goes to you, he's like, gotta get to mom. And I'm like, hey, let's go this way. He's like, I can't. And I gave him that correction. I gave him that, that pressure, positive punishment. I said, hey man, you got, you got to. I know you don't want to. Again, the, the bird that doesn't want to leave the nest. No, 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 I can't. You gotta go. Sorry, dude. And then when you give that uh, correction, you give him Of course, of course. 95% rainbows, butterflies, purely positive. Good job, bud. 5% punishment, 5% pressure. It's a balance, you know, that you have, you have, what ecosystem could ever live without punishment? What world do, do not only humans, but animals and anything, we all live with punishment and structure and hey, you can't do this. And if you do, there's consequence. What the heck? You know what I mean? So this was so, an excellent episode guys and I'm actually going to pull multiple videos out from this one session. So I'm going to I'm going to pull some information and make them into individual videos uh, over the next week and, and change just because there was just so much information and this was just somebody who was reaching out for help from a clean slate that had had dogs in the past with no reaction uh, at all and no problems on the leash and now they're trying to figure out what the heck do they do. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't yet, do me a favor, like, subscribe to my channel. I put videos like this out every single week, sometimes multiple. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm going to get going, get warm. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.